Okay, can I remind members that COVID-related measures are in place and that face coverings should be worn while moving around the chamber and around the Holyrood campus. The next item of business is a statement by John Swinney on response to Storm Arwen. The Deputy First Minister will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be no interruptions or interventions. And I call on Mr Swinney for around 10 minutes, Deputy First Minister. I am grateful for the opportunity to update Parliament on the response to and continued recovery from, from the major impacts of Storm Arwen. On Friday, the Met Office took the serious step of issuing a red weather warning of danger to life. Classification of a weather incident at this level happens rarely and is an indication of the magnitude of the challenge that has been faced. Storm Arwen has caused widespread and extensive damage, with impacts that have been greater than initially anticipated. This has created significant challenges and hardship for communities and households across Scotland. I want to extend my sympathy to everyone who has been and continues to be affected and assure everyone involved that every effort has been made with our partners to address the impacts as swiftly as possible. Although Scotland regularly experiences severe winter storms, the high winds generally associated with them are from a southerly to northwesterly direction. However, on this occasion, the storm tracked down the North Sea, bringing very strong north to northeasterly winds across eastern coastal areas. Naturally, our infrastructure is designed to handle incidents from the prevailing wind direction. That Storm Arwen gave rise to very strong winds from an unusual direction exacerbated the severity of the incident. Met Office records identify a few occasions in the 1970s and 1980s when widespread strong north to northeasterly winds have been recorded across eastern Scotland, but these only gave gusts to around 60 to 70 miles per hour, compared with the damaging gusts of around 80 to 90 miles per hour experienced during Storm Arwen. To give a sense of the scale of this event, Storm Arwen has been a more significant event than the Beast from the East in 2018, requiring a complexity of response that we have not seen for a number of years. It has affected almost all of Scotland, with the most widespread impacts being felt in the North East, Dumfries and Galloway and the borders. In the North East, this has been compounded by heavy snow and a sharp drop in temperatures. Amber warnings were issued in the days leading up to Friday's storm, but the Met Office escalated this to a red warning on Friday at 10.30 a.m. The Scottish Government Resilience Committee met on Friday to be assured of preparations with information from local resilience partnerships, power and utility companies. Throughout the duration of the storm and its aftermath, the Scottish Government has been working closely with resilience partners and responders on the ground and with Scottish and Southern Energy Networks and Scottish Power to ensure that all is being done to respond to the impacts of this storm. Throughout this, the safety and welfare of people affected has been and remains at the forefront of these discussions. I am very aware that the impacts of this are still being felt across areas of Scotland and the recovery will take time. Our priority right now is to get power restored to homes and to provide support to those affected. The peak of the disruption saw 79,500 Scottish power customers and 126,000 Scottish and Southern Energy Networks customers affected. Both Scottish Power and Scottish and Southern Energy Networks have worked tirelessly on network repairs and have restored supplies to 184,500 people as of 8pm yesterday. However, I am acutely aware that this will be of little comfort to the customers who continue to be off supply. As of 11.45 this morning, I am informed that 16,763 customers continue to be without power. These individuals are located in the borders to Fries and Galloway, Edinburgh, Fife, Aberdeenshire, Murray, Angus and Perthshire. I do not underestimate the impact this is having on people and their well-being and how serious the situation is. I would encourage anyone still affected by the impacts of Storm Arwen to get in touch with their local authority to get help, advice and welfare support if they have not already been able to access that. Scottish and Southern Energy Networks has deployed over 500 engineers and support staff to repair widespread and extensive damage to its network and support customers. 
Scottish Power, similarly, are deploying significant resource, and both companies are drawing additional mutual aid and resources from across the United Kingdom. Given the severity of the storm across the United Kingdom, the additional resources in mutual aid that can normally be called upon by the power companies has been available later in the incident than would normally be the case. In many areas, damage caused by fallen trees and other debris has been severe. This is hampering access, with specialist equipment being required. The power companies are also encountering much more significant damage to the network, which is therefore involving much more complex and resource-intensive solutions to be able to reconnect supply to particular areas. I want to pay tribute to the staff from Scottish Power and Scottish and Southern Energy Networks, who have worked in very difficult and often precarious conditions to make as much progress as possible in the restoration of power supplies. Three multi-agency resilience partnerships are coordinating the response activity in the north, east and west, working closely with the power companies. Support is being prioritised for care homes and the most vulnerable in the community, including those with medical needs, with a range of actions being taken in the most affected areas. Scottish Borders Council opened drop-in centres in key locations to provide free meals and hot drinks to residents in surrounding areas who remain without power. In Forth Valley, a Resilience Partnership Care for People group has been established especially to deal with the communities and vulnerable persons within them. Aberdeenshire Council confirmed all 170 schools will be closed on Monday and today, and all schools are being checked for storm damage, access routes, and to confirm if power, heating and water supplies are operational. The priority is to ensure buildings are safe before pupils and staff are welcomed back. The severe impacts in that area also meant that vaccination clinics in Aberdeenshire were cancelled on Monday, with planned reopening today. The Council has also set up rest centres and in other areas, hotels, pubs and halls are being opened to provide food and warmth. Local partnerships and community groups have been going door to door and providing hot food and assistance packages. While many people are making arrangements to stay with friends and families who have power, those without power are being offered accommodation in hotels. The British Red Cross are utilising community volunteers across the North area, supporting energy and council partners, providing door-to-door -door welfare checks on vulnerable people and care homes, and distributing blankets, food and essential supplies and information to vulnerable and prioritised individuals. In Dumfries and Galloway, the Care for People arrangements through the Council's Care at Home teams, social work teams and its Care Call service have continued to make care visits throughout this period. This has helped to identify those who may be in need of additional support and will continue to be closely monitored. There were a small number of primary school closures yesterday in the area, however, all except one are expected to reopen today. Our transport network was also seriously affected by the storm. On Friday, Police Scotland issued do not travel warnings, and by Saturday, many trunk roads and railway lines were closed. However, I am pleased to report that all trunk roads were cleared by Saturday evening and there are no remaining storm-related rail issues. There have been many wider impacts on the storm, with 10,000 properties having experienced water supply issues, and Scottish Water is working at pace to restore water supplies and is providing all those affected with alternative supplies of drinking water. Around 1,500 properties are still without a water supply, mainly across the Deeside area, with work being hampered by the loss of power and difficulty in accessing some sites due to ongoing weather conditions or blocked access routes. Telecoms providers have experienced significant infrastructure damage, and my officials have met with them through the National Emergency Alert for Telecoms protocol to seek assurances on power resilience provisions they have in place to restore mobile telecoms in affected areas. Actions being taken include mobile generation deployment to affected cell locations. While the position is improving, we continue to focus on this as a key issue. I would want to assure Parliament and members of the public that the focus of the Scottish Government, local resilience partnerships and the power and utility companies is on restoring services to those affected as quickly as possible and to taking the practical steps to help anyone who has been adversely affected. My expectation is that most of the remaining customers who are off supply will be restored today, but I regret for some of the more complex cases, supply is unlikely to be restored until later in the week. 
In the aftermath of this incident, we will review the preparations for and response to Storm Arwen to ensure we take all the learning from this exceptional storm. We have strong and robust arrangements in place to manage and address weather-related resilience issues at a national, regional and local level. But I will want to ensure that our arrangements continue to evolve and strengthen for the future. In conclusion, I would like to express my sincere thanks to all those who have been working in very difficult conditions and for prolonged periods to restore utility supplies and support affected communities and households. This includes voluntary organisations, local businesses and community groups of volunteers who are contributing significantly to neighbourhood wellbeing and resilience. We have been monitoring progress to address Storm Arwen's impacts closely, engaging with a range of organisations to ensure that the public are regularly updated in what has been a rapidly changing situation. We will continue to do so with our resilience partnerships remaining active to ensure that every possible resource is deployed and the worst effects of this significant storm are addressed. Thank you, Mr Swinney. Uh, the Deputy First Minister will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I, allow, I intend to allow around 20 minutes uh, for this item before we have to move to the next uh, item of business. I would be grateful if members who want to ask a question would press the request to speak buttons or place an R in the chat function if they are joining us online. And I call on Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank the Deputy First Minister for advance sight of his statement. But the 15,000 homes in Scotland still without power more than 13,000 of which are in the North East, are astounded by the government's appalling lack of planning here. Given what we saw in Storm Frank and then the beast from the East, and given weather reports were warning people of the impending catastrophe days before this one hit, why was there such a monumental failure of planning by this government? And secondly, the Press and Journal rails today that, quote, the Scottish government remains quiet Aside from a few cursory social media posts offering sympathy, but not assistance, it seems leaders have forgotten those affected. Now, thankfully, businesses such as pubs, hotels and community centres have stepped up. But the Fife Arms in Bramar say the response from the Scottish Government has been pretty shambolic at getting the emergency services, the army and power company employees deployed. So what steps is the Government taking now to proactively and productively coordinate the response and swift resolution. And finally, the cost of clear-up and presumably implementing the lessons learned that the Deputy First Minister referred to will be astronomical. Last night, the UK Government pledged help, saying we are on standby to provide further assistance to the Scottish Government. So, Deputy First Minister, what financial help will be made available to our underfunded local authorities to help? And will the Scottish Government be taking the UK Government up? on the offer of assistance. Deputy First Minister. I, I don't think uh, Liam Kerr characterises the gravity of the situation uh, in any way appropriately, presiding officer. Um, the, uh, the government does not run the power companies. I have no operational control over the power companies, but I think the power companies have worked extraordinarily hard to reconnect 184,500 people who have been disconnected by a, a storm of incredible ferocity. And Mr Kerr represents the northeast of Scotland. Um, uh, I assume he's looked around about him to see the scale of the damage that's been done to the infrastructure. Uh, I've looked around it in my own constituency in Perthshire. I've seen with my own eyes the impact of the storm. And that, unfortunately, takes time to clear up, which is what the power companies are focused on doing, which is exactly what I have been discussing with them at every stage since the storm emerged on Friday. In relation to the, um, the resources on the ground, we obviously work closely with local resilience partnerships who are fundamentally led by local authorities. That is the principle of our resilience operation that is in place. Mr Kerr again will be familiar with the work of Aberdeenshire Council which um, is in operational um, leadership at local level uh, to uh, take forward the emergency response. And I'm certainly profoundly grateful to the various voluntary organisations, to pubs, to hotels, to cafes, uh, who have decide, who've, who've just made themselves available to help people. I think this is the type of community spirit that's really welcome in our society. 
and it helps to assist members of the public who face jeopardy, in addition to the public servants who are going round door to door making sure that vulnerable people are supported. In relation to the financial question, um, the Minister for Public Finance has activated the Belwyn scheme in Scotland, so uh, the Scottish Government immediately has made clear that should the terms of the scheme be um, required, they are available to local authorities. I look with care at what the United Kingdom Government is offering financially. Um, forgive my scepticism, but I will look in great detail at the terms of the press statement that um, Mr Kerr cites. Uh, the United Kingdom Government is awful good at words on these questions, but not very good at following up with substance as a consequence. Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer, and thank you to the Deputy First Minister for advance sight of his statement. Can I begin by sending my condolences to those who have sadly lost a loved one during Storm Arwen and extend my sympathies to everyone affected by the storm impact and all those uh, on the front line of the response. Uh, we are hugely grateful to them. There is, however, a growing frustration from the thousands of people across the country, including many in my own South Scotland region and Dumfries and Galloway and the borders, who still have no power and, in some cases, no water supply and no idea when they will be reconnected due to a lack of information or, in some cases, misinformation. Now, the Deputy First Minister said his expectation is that most remaining customers with no power will be restored today, but some not until later this week. So, Can he elaborate on how many he anticipates will have to wait beyond today, and when when will the 1,500 properties still without water supply be reconnected? Can I also um, ask that the First Minister, given, the Deputy First Minister, given the problems with telecommunications in some areas, is the Scottish Government confident that all vulnerable residents have been contacted directly to ensure their well-being? Because simply asking people to contact their own council is not an option for many people. Deputy First Minister. I, um, Grateful to Mr Smith for the points that he makes. In relation to the, um, the steps to reconnect individuals, I would want to assure Mr Smith that the power companies are moving as fast as they possibly can do. Although in one of the calls I was involved in yesterday, one of the individuals I was in discussions with from the Scottish Power Energy Network was uh, down in um, Mr Smith's area in the Eaglesfield area and was citing to me the specific complexity of the difficulties because of multiple interruptions to the power supply that were affecting a limited number of properties. I cite that to give an example to Parliament that the issues that are being wrestled with are of a greater degree of complexity because of the damage that has been caused, which makes it difficult to give a prediction on the numbers involved, although the power companies are working as fast as they possibly can do to restore supplies, and I will get regular updates in the course of today about the progress that has been made. On water supply, much of this depends upon the ability to get supply to installations, uh, power supply to installations, and that then addresses the water supply issue. So the issues of, of electricity connection are really at the heart of that issue as well. On the question of uh, contacting vulnerable customers, the power companies and local authorities regularly um, are in dialogue um, about the ex existence and extent of vulnerability within communities. They have established lists of individuals to be contacted. I am assured by local resilience partnerships and by the power companies they have been um, undertaking that contacting. Um, but obviously, I am conscious that so many individuals in society now are dependent on mobile telephony networks and there can be significant interruption to them because of the loss of power supply. So um, it, I have had that assurance about vulnerable customers, but I do reiterate the point that if anybody is in need of assistance, um, I would urge them to contact their local resilience partnership to secure that. Thank you. I am conscious there are um, an understandably large number of colleagues uh, who want to get in and ask a question on this, given the impact it has had on uh, many parts of the country uh, and constituents' inter interests will need to be seen to be raised during this. So I would be keen for as succinct questions as possible and, similarly, Deputy First Minister, as succinct answers as you can manage. I call Gillian Martin to be followed by Douglas Lumsden. Thank you, President Officer. I have never seen such damage from high winds in my area before. Um, and we're all aware 
of, of some, some of the, the, the volumes of, of, of people that are, are still without power. I'd like to ask, though, how we're ensuring how there's sufficient resources to ensure that those in outlying areas are being checked on, not just for those on vulnerabilities lists, but I'm hearing from families with newborn babies, very concerned about older people who live alone that might be missed. Many can't get information. As the Deputy First Minister, just, we, we have exposed gaps in this digital world about communications. But can I ask for a little bit more detail on what resilience review work is going to be undertaken as a result of what has happened to us this week um, that has exposed some of those gaps? Deputy First Minister. As I indicated in my statement, I, as we do in all of these incidents, we will uh, consider the um, lessons we can learn from the handling of this particular incident. This has been, as Gillian Martin uh, acknowledges, a storm of the, the greatest ferocity that, with which we have had to wrestle. The damage has been significant and we need to identify if there are other steps we need to take to make networks and individuals and households more resilient as a consequence. So those, um, uh, th that discussion will start once we have got to the point where we have uh, secured resolution of the issues and we can properly and fully learn the lessons in concert with our resilience partnerships and with the power companies who are critical to this discussion. Douglas Lumsden to be followed by Karen Adam. Thank you, President Officer. Deputy First Minister, thousands without power, water and heat, roads blocked and communities cut off. But these same communities faced a wall of silence from the Scottish Government and the First Minister. Engineers, as you say, did a fantastic job, but were frankly overwhelmed and needed more help. Did the Scottish Government even ask the UK Government for emergency assistance, or did the Government take its eye off the ball yet again? Deputy First Minister. Well, I, I come back to my, my response to uh, Liam Kerr, whereby the, uh, the responsibility for the running of, for the operations of the power companies are the power companies themselves. I think it would be folly, folly, for me to interfere in the sophisticated technological work of power companies in restoring supply. Now, if Mr Lumsden wants to know, have I had discussions with power companies? Yes, I have, on multiple occasions. But what, and those companies have, and if Mr Lumsden doesn't know this because he's continuing to shout at me, he might want to stay silent for a moment while I explain the position. The power companies have access to mutual aid supplies across other power networks in the United Kingdom. But the point I made in my statement is that other parts of the United Kingdom were under severe strain as well. Now, some of those resources have now become available, but only once power has been replied in those original network areas. So let's take Southern, Scottish and Southern Energy, for example, a company that Mr Lumsden should be familiar with if he's familiar with the north of Scotland. They have an operation in the south of England, but they took a hammering as well. So once they recovered the damage in the south of England, they were able to relocate staff to come further north. That's the type of mutual aid arrangements that operate within the electricity market. And I think it would be folly for me to intervene and interfere in what the power companies are doing to resolve the situation as quickly as possible. Can I encourage members to ask their question and then allow the minister to answer? Karen Adam to be followed by Claire Baker. Thank you, President Officer. Firstly, I want to thank all those who have put forward a tremendous effort supporting local communities over the last five days and to note that many in my constituency are still without power and water. I have been in touch with vulnerable constituents, some for example who require power for medical equipment and running water to sterilise baby bottles. They have been offered reimbursement for takeaways and hotels but cannot meet the upfront costs. Once again, those who are living hand to mouth are suffering the most in an emergency. Can the Deputy First Minister outline what alternative measures the Scottish Government is considering in order to help people in these vulnerable circumstances? Deputy First Minister. I think fundamentally the needs of individuals uh, have to be addressed in these circumstances by the dialogue that goes on at local level with individual resilience partnerships to try to find the means of addressing the individual circumstances that people will face. Karen Adam has put to me an absolutely legitimate uh, set of scenarios, but they are um, distinctive uh, and different circumstances that have to be addressed. So the most appropriate mechanism is for that dialogue to take place 
between individuals and the local resilience partnerships. Those partnerships should be active um, at local level, making sure that indiv individuals facing difficulties are able to receive the support that they require. And uh, certainly in our reflections on this incident, we will be working to identify um, how individuals can be most effectively supported should we have to face interruptions of supply of the length that we're having to face in these highly unusual circumstances. Claire Baker to be followed by Emma Harper. Um, thank you. Um, I have to note that the Deputy First Minister did not mention Stirling Council in the statement, and I have been contacted by constituents who felt that Stirling's response, emergency response at the weekend was inadequate and that they were abandoned in freezing temperatures. There was no rest centres, there was no access to generators. I know that people could not operate oxygen tanks. People had an extremely difficult weekend. Um, can I ask the Deputy First Minister, on Friday at the Scottish Government Resilience Meeting, was he satisfied and confident that the plans that local resilience partnerships had in place were going to meet the impact of the expected and anticipated storm? Deputy First Minister. The, uh, at the Resilience uh, Committee meeting on Friday, we heard directly from the three res strategic resilience partnerships, the regional resilience partnerships, all of whom had been in dialogue with local resilience partnerships to ensure that the capacity was stood up to be available to assist individuals in the event of storm damage um, being uh, apparent, which obviously the red weather warning was a very clear indication was going to be the case. Uh, so all of that information and assurance was sought on Friday that all resilience partnerships would be ready to provide those particular um, examples. Now, if Claire Baker would like to supply me with the, uh, the information and the experience of members of the public that have contacted her, that would be helpful for us to, in, to, to seek the assurance that appropriate uh, measures and mechanisms were taken by individual local resilience partnerships to be ready for the challenges that came. Emma Harper to be followed by Beatrice Wishart. The Deputy First Minister has outlined what action has taken place across Scotland, and including in Dumfries and Galloway and the Scottish Borders, and I thank all staff and leadership for their efforts. Um, as more weather events are predicted, can the Deputy First Minister provide further info on what work is underway to identify the most vulnerable and how the Government can help, assist and support the local resilience partnerships? Deputy First Minister. Then also we, we we, as part of the resilience planning, we expect local resilience partnerships to establish very clearly those who, will face, who, who face vulnerability. Um, that knowledge is amassed through a lot of the work that goes on within local communities. Indeed, I saw that when I was in the Annan area looking at some of the impacts of flooding, and uh, many of the community-based organisations that I met there were very focused on ensuring that they provided adequate support to all of the individuals that um, faced any degree of vulnerability. So that knowledge is built up um, as part of the preparation of the resilience arrangements, and it's crucial that that is able to be followed through uh, and activated when an incident arises. Uh, there's obviously, where there's a power-related matter, a linkage very closely to the circumstances involving power companies who themselves have a knowledge of the various uh, uh, issues of vulnerability that will exist in different parts of the community. Beatrice Wishart to be followed by Paul McLennan. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Storm Arwen has highlighted our expectation and reliance on technology and online information, but when the power has gone and the batteries have run out, and in terms of lessons learned, how can the Scottish Government improve methods of communication in times of emergency, especially given the predicted increase in frequency and intensity of wild weather events due to the climate emergency? Deputy First Minister. I think this is a very significant issue. Uh, because we are now, as householders and as citizens, all immensely more dependent on the use of mobile uh, telephony, uh, of digital connectivity, and it is all entirely power dependent. And therefore, the means of ensuring that we have adequate contact mechanisms in place in times of difficulty of this magnitude are just exacerbated by the issues that Beatrice Wishart properly uh, puts to me. That will be one of the issues we will reflect on closely in the uh, resilience exercise because it highlights the significant dependence on electricity power supplies which have been exacerbated by this incident. Paul McLennan, uh, to be followed by Mark Ruskell. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. In my constituency in East Lothian, over 3,000 trees were blown over at John Muir Country Park in Dunbar alone. 
and we have seen the impact of wildlife uh, impact reported elsewhere. Can I ask the Deputy First Minister what consideration has been given to addressing the effects on nature and the environment as we look to recover from the impacts of Storm Arwen? Deputy First Minister. Uh, there is obviously a, a very significant impact in the John Muir Country Park to which Mr McLennan uh, uh, mentions. Um, Forestry Land Scotland are looking at these issues very actively and are provide, have provided guidance to individuals to avoid um, being in the forest areas while the situation is properly assessed. So we must consider the impacts of the, uh, the incident on our natural environment. There will be uh, a very careful exercise has to be undertaken to remedy those issues, and particularly in the, uh, in the uh, circumstance that Mr McLennan raises with me. Mark Ruskell to be followed by Alexander Burnett. Can I thank those who worked tirelessly to reconnect communities uh, at the weekend and, and continuing to do that work? My own community in the Stirling area uh, had no electricity for the best part of four days, um, despite the fact that over the weekend we were told that we would get a reconnection on the, through the online app um, within about four hours. Does the Deputy First Minister recognise that it's very difficult, almost impossible, for householders to uh, plan ahead when they're met with these sort of rolling deadlines that can't be met? And how does he think that communication generally can be improved, particularly around people's rights, because we were told at the weekend that utility companies would pay for free pizza for people, but the information that people could be eligible for up to £700 worth of compensation has not really got out there. Deputy First Minister. I think it's important that the quality of communication that's available to householders is at the highest level possible. The, um, the power companies have shared with me the volume of, of contact they have had with individuals. They have um, had a colossal number of contacts from members of the public. Um, it is important that individuals pursue their rights in relation to interruption of supply. Um, but it is equally important that the power companies have quality and reliable information available for individuals as to when incidents are likely to be resolved uh, as a consequence of the type of outage that we have experienced. Alexander Burnett, who joins us remotely, to be followed by John Mason. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I uh, echo the gratitude expressed by parliamentary colleagues uh, for those working to restore power and those assisting those affected? Now, thousands of people across my constituency have been and still remain impacted by the storm. And I spoke to care homes across Aberdeenshire West who were scrambling for generators over the weekend with major concerns for their most vulnerable residents. Now, the red weather warning was issued on Friday morning uh, and the storm was on the radar before then. So can I ask what resiliency planning have the Scottish Government done to protect our care homes? How will it commit to doing it better next time? Deputy First Minister. The, uh, the, the priority, has, priority has been attached to ensuring that power supplies were able to be sustained for um, care homes and for those uh, individuals with vulnerabilities. Um, in my discussions with the Local Resilience Partnership in uh, Aberdeenshire, uh, I have been assured that steps are taken to make sure that power supplies were assured to those, um, to those organisations and institutions. Uh, obviously, the, uh, in, in a number of cases in Mr Burnett's constituency, um, there were some strategic faults in the electricity network that, once remedied, resolved the situation for a significant proportion of his constituency. But they were a, an indication of the magnitude and the severity of the incident that such widespread effects uh, had arisen as a consequence. But um, uh, we will ensure that the issues about um, emergency supply, many of these ventures have emergency supplies available to them, that these are reassessed as part of the work of local resilience partnerships to guarantee that we have resilience in all of these circumstances. I can tell the Chamber we are already over time. I do intend to try and call all three remaining speakers, but the questions will have to be brief and the responses as brief as possible. John Mason. Uh, thank you. I mean, when transport and communications are, are so damaged, it makes us realise that local communities are so important. Can the government say anything about how they can empower local communities for such incidents in future? Thank you. Deputy First Minister. There are numerous examples, presiding officer, of the ventures that local communities bring forward. Uh, I think that there are a number of examples 
of uh, local organisations, resilience forums. We have generated uh, a number of these through uh, flood prevention activity, who provide practical and tangible assistance to individuals. And um, there, there is a whole network of these available around the country. And the government's community empowerment agenda is designed to support and to encourage the development of similar ventures. Thank you. Craig Coy to be followed by Rachel Hamilton. Q, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, does the Deputy First Minister uh, accept and recognise that at this time of year, every day's trading counts for our struggling small businesses? And will he, will he therefore look at a targeted package of support for those businesses which suffer significant loss of income due to uh, destruction or damage inflicted by Storm Arwen? Deputy First Minister. I, I think I, I've put on record the fact that we'll, we, we've opened the Belwyn scheme. Um, obviously, the government remains open to consideration of any other issues that are relevant. Um, and if Mr Hoy has any particular issues to raise with the government in that respect, that they can be looked at by the Finance Secretary. Thank you. And finally, Rachel Hamilton. Officer, first of all, can I record my thanks to everyone who has been dealing with this uh, catastrophe. 2,000 of my constituents are still without power. Deputy First Minister, in the Ettrick Valley, the Kailwater Valley in Berwickshire. So can I ask what the Scottish Government can do for the following? Provide generators, because there aren't enough to go round. Support energy companies by working out a way of supplying extra additional linesmen and engineers. And also supplying essential support to the Scottish Borders Council, who are uh, going through significant financial resource to supply hot food uh, to residents without power. First Minister. But, obviously, I, I, think I've, I think I've gone through the issue about the power companies. The power companies have a mutual aid arrangement around the, uh, the, the network. That is, you know, we, we, we can't send you know, any old individual up an electricity pole to reconnect the electricity supply. It's just, it just defies belief that um, we're, we're getting suggestions like that. Uh, on, in relation to the financial issues, um, we've activated the Bellwind scheme. If local authorities are incurring expenditure which merits the classification of that scheme, the financial support is available to them to enable that to be the case. But um, certainly I, I can assure Rachel Hamilton that the Local Resilience Partnership in the Borders has been actively involved in discussions with the Power Networks, with the East of Scotland Resilience Partnership, to ensure that all of the issues that need to be addressed have been addressed as quickly as possible. But I come back to my core point. This is been extensive damage that is taking a prolonged period to resolve because of the intensity of the damage that has been created. Thank you for colleagues' cooperation in allowing all the questions to be taken and responded to. There will be a brief um, pause now before we move to the next item of business.